I got this feeling inside my bones. <laughs> oh yeah, rub it in. <laughs> I've had a few comments about that. That was a wonderful video. That was good fun. Good laugh. And yeah, I asked, I, I asked my brother about the five pound challenge. He said, I don't know, but I seen you dancing around in your pajamas. It got me interested. <laughs> I, <had to> <laughs> I said, oh, that, that's all it took, was it? <laughs> oh, it's good fun. Welcome, Rob McGowan from Miramichi. How are you? Bonjour. Comment ça va? <laughs> and how are you today, Doc? I'm doing wonderful. I am doing great. It's a beautiful day to be alive. It is. It is. It's a great day to be alive. Sun still shining when it closes my eyes. <laughs> and it's so much fun to come on. And today's going to be a great day. We're at day four of the challenge. Day four. Wow, that went fast. I know. It's really, really Flew fast. Who by? So we've been having a great week. Uh, we're hearing lots from you, Rob. And I think let's just get into it. How is how are things going for you? And how is your checklist uh, uh, looking for today? Good, good. Let's see. We can go through it. Uh, we'll go with number one. It's always uh, count your blessings, that kind of stuff. Today, I was thinking a lot about, uh, so what are my blessings? You know, the simplest things. I'm not hungry. I live, you know, relatively good in Canada. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I don't have to worry about work. I don't, all that stuff is good for me. My mind is good. I can think well, I can read, I can educate, I can learn. So I have all these things to be thankful for. I'm not uh, in any way unable to do stuff. So just in that alone, I'm truly blessed to compared to a lot of people in the world that have struggles that I don't have. So that was, that was counting my blessings today. I thought about that. I love that. And, you know, even just the word blessings, isn't it such a pretty word? It is. It is a good word. It's a pretty word, you know, to feel blessed and to feel happy and to feel joyful. And wasn't that also, what's the song? Okay, Maria, um, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Sound of music? Uh, yeah. Kind of my Old favorite. copper kettles and warm woolen. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beautiful. Great, great movie. Me and my yeah. grandson watch that every year. It's wonderful. <laughs> but really, that's like her blessings, her little gratitudes every day. So... That's uh, that's a great one to remember. I that love is, that one. That's a good song. Love, I, love I actually it. will find myself singing that song every once in a while, driving along in my car. Believe it or not, yes. Strange, I know. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a song that comes to me when I was in Air Cadets many years ago. I was in the flag parade where you have to carry the flag and hold it like an hour and a half. And mm -hmm. I remember singing that song to keep me motivated <laughs> because I could just sing it over and over again in my head. It was wonderful to keep me going. Awesome. It is. Yeah, it's a great song. It's a great song. Love it. Count your Number blessings. two, be in the moment. So I, I was thinking about that today and I was thinking, you know, sometimes I get caught up thinking, worried about my future. We all have things we want to happen and we want them sooner than later. And uh, I think, oh, why, you know, I don't want to wait that long, or there's these things going on and struggles in your life. But while you're doing that, and you're thinking about, you know, what you want, and what's down the road, and where you're going to be, you forget about what's actually going on in your life. And you you stop to, to realize, I have to enjoy this moment too, the things that are happening. So every day, no matter where you're going, and what your struggles are, and what you're trying to get to, you have to look each day, whether it's the time you spend with your grandchildren, or whoever, or at your job, you know, with the coworkers you're at, what do you say to the workers when you're at with them today? And how did you make this day special for the people that are around you? And uh, work on your future, but also stay in the moment about, don't, don't forget, a month from now, you're going to look back a month ago, and is it going to be something you remembered? Or is it going to be something that just was nothing because you, all you did was worry about the future? Mm. So stay in the moment. Plan your future, work on it. Stay in the moment. Do everything you can in those moments. Right. Yep. Being present. It's one of the things that's got me so far uh, ahead. You know, when I was burnt out in 2012, I still remember then I was, um, there was a time I was coming home from a, a trip. You know, I, I had these mission trips to Haiti and I was on the plane and I was already planning the next trip three months from, from then. And I said, you know, looking back at that, I said, wow, 
I, I wasn't able to then enjoy that being present in the moment, you know, taking time to say, you know, all is good, job well done, because we're always looking for the next thing. And I think so many of us now, we are always looking for something more. Um, mm. You know, sadly, with especially with videos and all this texting, you know, our brain gets wired that we want that next little hit because we want something new to stimulate us. But if we just took time to breathe and appreciate being in that present moment, it gives us so much more rewards because that's all we have is this, this pure present moment. That's true. The future will, uh, let's quote Marcus really again, the future will take care of itself and you'll meet it with the same vigor that you have today for it when the day comes. I like that one. Great inspiration, Rob. So wonderful to have you here on this five pound challenge. <laughs> well, it's fun to be here. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And then next, what do we got next here? Water. Well, I was thinking this water thing, you know, this drinking gallons of water every day is not easy. And I'm, you know, I like a good drink now and then. So I thought yesterday I'm going to drink some pop instead. So I went out and got myself some pop, which is really good, but it's not actually pop. It's stevia water <laughs> but it's flavored and it's it's healthier for you so i don't know doc is this stuff any good for you well let's have a look at it rob so um go to the ingredients on the side calorie zero fat okay. zero sodium zero carbohydrate zero sugar zero protein zero vitamins okay. a c calcium and iron and that's it okay so, so it's pretty much nothing. Right. <laughs> and then if, vitamin. That's right. And if you look though at the actual ingredients, it's probably carbonated water and stevia. Man, you know, blind guys can't see that. Yep. Carbonated <laughs> water, acid, stevia leaf extract. And stevia, right. And so, Rob, have you ever had stevia before? Well, I, I my son drinks it, so I have had one here and there, but right. never really liked it, but I've gotten to like it now. And it seems to, uh, once you get used to it, it's actually pretty good. It's a nice replacement. Yeah. So again, it's something that can be as a treat, right? It can satisfy a little bit of something bubbly that you want to have. But for people that don't know stevia, you know, stevia is a plant. So last summer in Miramichi, I bought some from one of the local nurseries and I grew stevia. And it was the greatest thing because literally you go out there and you pick off the leaf and you chew on it and you taste this little bit of sweetness that's within the leaf itself. Oh, really? So people think that stevia is this, you know, where does it come from? Is it artificial and everything else? But literally it's a simple plant. All they do is either they grind it up or they kind of, you know, compress the leaves. Um, and then they would just take that, um, that natural sugar. And I think it's, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 times sweeter, you know, ounce per ounce than sugar is. And the nice thing about, stevia is that it doesn't spike um, blood sugar because some sweeteners are known to spike blood sugar. Oh, wow. Because Rob, I think you-, you Oh, used sounds to positive. Yeah, so this is good. So it's positive, comes from a plant that was created, you know, that grows in the ground. Well, that fits then, the organic stuff. Exactly. And we get some bubbly water. Wow, I did good. I like so but actually, since you're there, Rob, though, I know, I believe that you used to be a coffee with cream and sugar kind of guy, right? Yep. Okay. Now, a lot of people go to Tim's and they get lots of other sweeteners, right? Because mm -hmm. you can get the caramel. Some... Yeah. Always got a shot of caramel in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so again, pure sugar. Um, <laughs> but also a lot of people ask me questions about the types of sugars and sweeteners that they what is the healthier sugar to have, okay? So some people might be there saying, well, uh, Dr. Keenan, well, um, you know, sugar comes from sugar cane. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is much sugar used to come from sugar cane. A lot of the sugar that's used now for a lot of things like Coca-Cola comes from high fructose corn syrup. Um, and there's a great documentary, actually I'll post it um, on the sugar fix there was a pediatrician in America that really kind of exposed high fructose corn syrup because high fructose corn syrup comes from refined corn. So if people remember the Coca-Cola, there was the old Coke and the new Coke. 
And the difference is that one of the Coca-Colas was made from sugar cane and the other one was made from highly processed high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn oh. syrup is also directly toxic to the liver. And so a lot of our obesity epidemic came from this back in the 70s when they started to use a lot more of this refined corn, um, you know, high fructose corn syrup, and they started adding it to a lot of our foods and a lot of our processed foods. Wow. Well, um, right. I didn't know that. But... Yeah. And so the sugars I do recommend uh, when people want to have something, I don't know if we talked about, so Lacanto, which is monk fruit, um, also erythritol, swerve, which is erythritol, and then the other, and then stevia, like we, sp we spoke about. And there is a new one out called allulose, um, which is a, a cellulose kind of based. I, I haven't tried that one yet, but apparently it's not meant to have an impact on blood sugar. So for individuals that are really have to watch sugar closely, uh, which most people should be doing, but in particular for diabetics or pre-diabetics, then if they're going to go after this five-day challenge, if people want to try something, you know, maybe making cookies or something like that again, then using one of these alternate sugars is better than simply having white sugar when you're cooking or baking. Well, and the ones to stay away from, because this is where I get my little beef with Tim's, is usually they're going to give you a package of Splenda or like aspartame. So Splenda is sucralose, but sucralose can still spike blood sugars. Sucralose in many people, like I'm one of them, it gives me headaches, it gives me migraines because it is an artificial base sugar. Um, and then of course, aspartame is rat poison. So we definitely don't rat know. poison. Well, that's always good to know. Can I have a little well, rat poison with my coffee, please? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we have, to, we have to think about it, right? Like it, you know, it's, I should say rat poison, it's toxic to the brains of rats. So okay. we have to think about when we're putting those types of artificial sweeteners inside our bodies. Wow. And they allow it on the shelf. Well, it's crazy. And they do. Yes. <laughs> so on the last one, uh, movement. So I've been working on that. So I <laughs> decided uh, I'm, I'm a multitask kind of guy. So <laughs> yesterday I was, uh, I decided I was going to uh, get on my exercise bike. And I put a, a few little weights in my hand, little 10 pound weights. And I rode this exercise bike and I turned on my TV and I listened to the Bhagavad Gita. And uh quotes all for an hour so I got to do movement and learn at the same time so it was quite interesting <laughs> so that, that was my way of doing movement yesterday getting some exercise in and uh, also learning at the same time great idea you know why not if your brain is going to be you know focused on it's going to be an hour doing an activity maybe learn something new great idea yeah. what's well, distraction like other than thinking about this sucks riding this bicycle. Maybe right. distract yourself and think about something else. There's some people that call it, they take that further too, even when they're driving. You know, uh, I've heard the term used called traffic university. So basically, you know, if you have a half an hour or 45 minute or something commute, instead of just listening to the news, which who knows what kind of information it has that gets us down, but what if you turned on like a motivational soundtrack, listen to an audio book? Um, to again, use our time a little bit more wisely. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll write one of those next week. Coming up for sale. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Can you imagine? <laughs> Rob's motivation. <laughs> well, yeah, the Rob McGowan. Well, you've got a pod bean podcast, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Like Marcus Aurelius Sunrises and all kinds of things, but they're all for fun. Yeah, maybe if you could. Enjoy. People could enjoy it. Right, combine them or just people can hit the playlist and then they can keep listening to it yeah. again and again. I sing on there. You never know what's going to be on those things, actually. They're always kind of fun and crazy. Well, it's just what we need to get us motivated, you know, and I think over these five days, like, I know I've seen people saying they got their friends on board, they got their workplace on board, you know, they forced their, their spouse on board, um, but whatever it takes to get us motivated. And for me, music and listening to something inspirational, uh, well, that's just how I start my day every day. Yeah. Well, there's great stuff. You know, you Turn off the news, get rid of it. It's not real anymore anyway. There's no such thing as news. Right. It's all just opinion and propaganda. It's just not, right. it's not real. Mm -hmm. So go listen to somebody who's changing their life. If you want to be an artist, go listen to artists. You know, click here. Here's an artist. This is how you start. This is what you do. You want to play a musical instrument? There's all kinds of things on there. Here's how you start. This is what you do. Like there's anything you want to learn or do, you can do as possible now. 
at the touch of your fingers. Like it's right there for everybody. It's not hard, complicated anymore like it used to be. People can learn instantly mm -hmm. and, it, and it doesn't take much because they've mastered how to get it out to you in a, a simple form. So there's lots of it there. Go learn. Better your life. Right. And, you know, if people want to be healthy, this is why I'm hoping that they've turned tuned in this week. Um, I've also I have a lot of podcasts that I listen to about health because, you know, many times people will say, well, you know, my doctor didn't tell me or I don't understand this. But in the digital age, there is no excuse. Like, remember the years, Rob, we had to go to the library and get a book out and find the encyclopedia and go through mm -hmm. the index and and then you'd get reference and you'd go to have to find 10 other books to reference it. And then they'd have to order it from another library to get it. <laughs> and now we can go to Wikipedia or WebMD or whatever it is, and we can learn. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of my pet peeves is when individuals come in and say, well, I don't understand this doctor. And I say, well, you need to learn it. You know, this is what's going on in your body. You know, if you have this condition, research it because no person is ever going to take your health as seriously as you take your health. Um, yeah. So go ahead and get out there and learn. We have so many no, ways. We don't learn. take our health serious. That's the problem. Well, if our dog gets sick, we'll make sure that he has his medicine every day and, you know, pet the dog and brush him and take care of him. We get sick half the time you forget your medicine or you don't bother or you, it's like people don't take care of themselves as well as they would take care of their own animals. So there's something wrong with the way we think. We got to start respecting ourselves more and treating our bodies like temples and becoming what we're supposed to be. Hmm. And that's it. It's that respect for our bodies. Because when we take it, when we take it for granted, and in some ways, I think when we live in a healthcare system, like in Canada, that's fully subsidized, it's a public healthcare system. You know, if we had to pay large amounts of, of money for our health, would that switch our, our thinking a little bit as well? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but respect, taking care of us, knowing that uh, we have value, we have worth, and that this is our one shot. We get this one life to live. And so we get to choose how we want to live it. You, uh, yeah. So many years from now, when you're looking back, you're going to say, in this year, what did I do? And are you going to think, yeah, that was a good year? Or are you going to think, you know, just another wasted one? Yeah. You know, maybe this is the year you got yourself together. You learned a new craft. You got your body in shape. You got your mind in shape. You just slowly incrementally. So two years from now, you're in a position to change the world and make a difference. Once you change yourself, you can change the world. It's just the way it is. And it's where people start. Like today I've got my, what do I have on my today? I think you can see it. I'm a, today I'm a warrior, not a worrier. And, but again, this is like we talked about the other day. It's these words that we tell us in our brain. And when we want to make the switch, this is just it. It's, it's that talk that we tell ourselves. Um, what's the Marcus Aurelius quote about the color of our thoughts? Uh, our lives are filled by the colors of our thoughts. So right. how you live matters, how you think matters. If you, uh, if you see the world as good and you seek good, then you'll have a good life. If you see the world as bad and you seek bad, then nothing can come but bad, right? Because that's the way you see it. Right. Change the way you think about things. Everybody change the way you think about your enemy. Just think, I have a, a quote that I wrote for myself that I, uh, I, I, often think of it's that when I have an enemy or somebody that bothers me or something's wrong and I think my enemy is only me in different circumstances because depending on what's going on in a person's life they can be a totally different than the person they should be so if I think maybe if I'm in a different circumstance where I have been in the past and I've been not so nice or I haven't been a good person the circumstances around me were creating that in the way I thought so whenever somebody comes against me that's in that kind of frame, I think that's just me in a different circumstance. What would I do to help me? What's the most I can do for myself? That's what I should do for that person. Mm -hmm. Think of them as my own person. Right. Because we're all connected, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I guess the word I like to use when you think of that other person, but is to reframe it, right? To think of it as a different frame, as a different picture. Um, you know, what some people have been talking about lately is that they're having a lot of struggles with things. And so it's how we reframe the struggle. And if we want to think about it as a struggle, if we want to think about it as the problem, or if we want to think about it as the solution and the outcome. 
And you were mentioning a little bit about sacrifice. So how could you see that relating to, you know, just some of the things that we're doing this week on the challenge, like how to reframe what's going on? Well, sacrifice is in order to gain anything, you have to give something up. You know, if, if you say a lot of people say, oh, I, I can't afford something. It's just it's too much. But what are you spending all your money on that you have? It might be a little bit. There's a, there's a famous book that everybody I, I think you should read. There was an old city called Babylon, which is the richest city in the world. And uh, the man who was rich there, if you, if you get a chance, read that book. And it's a simple process of how to enrich your life and, and have a wealthy living. And he teaches a whole city and it becomes the richest kingdom. So if you have a chance, read that book, because it's all about looking at what's around you and saying, what, what am I doing that's too much, you know, that, that's doing nothing for me. You know, if I'm watching Netflix at night, eat my chips because it feels good. I think, oh, yeah, I can't wait to get home, eat my chips and watch whatever the office for two hours, you know, because it's funny and I have a laugh and I feel OK. But in those two hours, I've lost all that time. And we only have a very little bit of time, like incremental. That was the time I could have taught myself maybe about something to get a better job. What kind of job do I want to have? What do I want to work at? What kind of thing do I want to do? And then once you know what you want to do, you say, what do I have to learn to be able to do that thing? And then you just start incrementally breaking it down to the smallest, tiniest thing that you need to do to get to where you want to be. So I can't be here today, but I can start here. I can take that first step, you know, journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. What is the first step? Get up, clean my room, make sure I have somewhere nice to come home to tonight so that when I lay down, I can feel good about my day, you know, and reflect on it. Just little things, write down your progress every day. You know, am I moving towards it or am I just still doing the same, same old, same old complaining, waiting around, waiting around for life to happen? It's never going to happen. If you're waiting, it's never going to happen. Uh, I, I keep a, I used to keep a saying in my wallet that says uh, a, a professional finds inspiration in the work. An amateur waits for inspiration. So you have to get out there and do it. If you don't, if you're not moving forward and moving towards something, nothing will ever happen. If you're waiting for it to come to you, you'll be waiting a long time. Profound. Thanks, Rob. You know, I, I hope that these are some of the things, part of the reason I got the journal exercise together for people is to start to change that mind, right? To think about the focus, you know, what will make today great. And then at the end of the day, what was that magic moment of the day? Um, and, you know, taking this a step further is what is the solution? So how do I want to feel? How do I want to be, uh, you know, in a week from now? And then taking the baby steps each and every day, because it's all about the baby steps. That's true. And for anybody who's trying to fix their health and do stuff, they should be joining your programs. Because I know that you, whenever you, uh, I'll send Tiffany something, you know, picture my meal and say, what am I doing with this or whatever? She's always helpful and can always help make a difference in your life. So if you're trying to get healthy, she's the right doctor for you, I tell you. So join the programs and uh, it'll change your life. Thanks, Rob. Um, we do have one more topic to talk about today, though. We didn't talk about sleep. No, that's your job. You get the last okay. topic. <laughs> so um, I'll just kind of, you know, we've been talking a little bit about sleep for many times throughout the week and uh, the importance of it. But today's topic is rest and recovery. And so we've got a, you know, a few little points that we've already, I think, highlighted, um, you know, the importance of going to bed early. Now, for people that are really interested, there is a, a doc that you may want to follow as well. He is the sleep doctor, Dr. Michael Bruis, B-R-E-U-S. And he really writes a lot about sleep archetypes. So it is important to know that when it comes to recovery, that some of us are the early risers and that some of us are the night owls, Okay. So many times um, what happens is our, our society and our systems are designed around a nine to five job for the most part. So if you are a night owl and you don't like getting up until 10 because your body, you know, you stay up till midnight, then that can be hard for you to, to shift and to adapt. So first kind of saying, what kind of person am I? Am I a night owl? Number one, is it just because I'm watching Netflix till three or 4 a.m.? Or is it, do I physically feel that my mind is clearer at night or clearer in the morning? The majority of people are morning people. And we know, like for me, I get up at five. I know that I get so much done in the three hours before I go to work um, because my mind is so clear and so focused at that time. So figuring out who you are. 
Um, but then the hours of sleep that you need to get, like people often ask about this. Uh, most people are going to need a minimum of six hours at night. There's, I don't know if anyone that really is going to get proper recovery without six hours of sleep. So, you know, mo the majority actually do need closer to eight hours of sleep at night. And of course, children need 10 to 12 hours of sleep at night. Like think of a baby. We all know what happens when babies don't get their naps. They don't get their rest. They lose it. They panic. They get really irritable and shaky. And I'm sure many of us might have seen uh, how we get when we have a lack of sleep. Our mind is not so clear. We get cranky, you know, and maybe for us, you know, we get cranky. So we lash out. We don't have focus of our thoughts. We get cravings. We make improper decisions. Maybe the choices that aren't so good for our health or our family or even safety choices when we're not getting enough sleep. So adequate sleep is super important as well. And then when you're trying to get your sleep back in order, the key thing is to say, what time do I want to wake up with? Because people often think, well, I sh sh where do I start? Do I start by going to bed at a good, the same bedtime or my wake up time? But ideally, you're going to look at your morning time and making sure that time is consistent. So if you want to get up at six every day, then you should count, start by counting back at eight eight hours from there. And then that should be the time that you should be trying to say, I want to be in bed. And then most of us know we need a little time for wind down. Okay. So the wind down was what a lot of the, the work was about as well during these five days is to talk about those sorts of things that many doctors will call sleep hygiene. So it means getting yourself ready for, for bed. So Rob, when your little ones were small, so what did you, what was your kind of little bedtime ritual that you would do with the kids at night? Uh, pick them up by their feet, drag them across the covers, lift the bed. So they got the sheets down, lay them in bed, uh, sing them a song on my guitar sometimes or tell them a story or whatever. That's yeah. pretty much it. So, but they knew each night that dad was going to be there uh, when you were available, like all, but to take the sheets down sing a little song. And then that was, they knew that was their time to get quiet. Mm -hmm. So how many of us have bedtime rituals as well? But developing that bedtime ritual is super important. So for me, so my bedtime ritual now is uh, when I'm on schedule and not traveling. So I like to be in bed by 930. So around 8, 830, I actually dim all the lights in my house. I, I really love candles. <laughs> and so I generally will try to put on several candles in my house. In my bedroom, I don't even use um, a light. I actually just have a candle. It is in a glass container, so it's safer than just a freestanding candle. But I put the candles on because number one, our brain, when we're ready to go to sleep at night, the wavelength and the color of a candle or a fire is actually more natural to us. Because think of this way back, you know, a few hundred, even just a hundred or so years ago, you know, when our uh, electricity wasn't around, not even a hundred, you know, 50, 60 years ago, but in the evening, our body would wind down to candlelight. And so that is actually going to be the first kind of call to say, okay, body, it's time to wind down. So I turn off all the other overhead lamps and everything in my house. Um, and I know many people can't always do that, but we know that lighting it's again, it's about this blue light that we can get. And certain types of bulbs will emit a stronger light that starts to interfere with our brain waves. It starts to impact the melatonin, which is the chemical naturally released that allows us to kind of want to fall asleep at night. Computers, again, I shut those all off. Now, part of my routine as well is I do listen to um, a meditation at night when I go to bed. So of course I turn my iPhone on briefly and then I just listen to it as it's sitting on my nighttime stand. But the other part of my nighttime wind down routine is of course, you know, you brush your teeth and do all that kind of stuff. Um, I have some oils that I spray in my room. I have a really nice lavender. So I spritz that all over my bed. And then I have on my bedside journal table, I have a gratitude journal. And so my gratitude journal, I write down three really wonderful things that have happened to me today. And I try to be really, I express myself into, into those ways that, you know, what I felt really good about. And I try to really describe it to create this vivid imagery in my mind. And then I also put in my little book, it's like 
three things that I want to uh, work on a little bit for tomorrow. So it's almost like my little daily checklist with myself that says how I feel joy. And then tomorrow, you know, maybe things that a, a choice that I want to make a little bit differently so that I can bring more joy to my day tomorrow. And then that's the thoughts that are in my head as I get ready to go to sleep at night. And then I put on a very gentle meditation. Often it's even um, like I shared a sleep story um, or it's just even music or vibrational sounds because we have to think about bedtime. Bedtime, those hours before we go to sleep, uh, when we go into sleep, you know, our brain is actually getting cleaned up at night. You know, we talked a little bit about that when it comes to our digestion and everything else, but also our mind is getting cleaned up at nighttime. So if we watch the news before we go to bed, if we watch a late night television show that's all about murder and violence, and then you're going straight to bed afterward, what are you programming into your subconscious? Because we know, number one, so hypnotherapy works, right? When we're going to sleep at night, we're actually, whatever we have in our minds just before bed is going to go almost like a hypnotherapy session. And that's going to be working to program our subconscious mind. There's a whole show in there, you know, <laughs> thinking about healing yourself before you go to sleep. Exactly. And this is it. And it's our mind and our thoughts and what we're doing. So, so for many individuals, they say, well, I can't calm my mind. That is such a big one. People tell me before bed. And then I say, well, what are you doing? And if, the majority of people are watching television before they go to bed at night. And unless you're watching maybe a YouTube, you're watching a TEDx talk, you're watching something motivational. Maybe you're watching even like a, those, what are those heartland stories or Hallmark movies on Netflix or something. It's about a feel good movie or like last night I watched a kid's cartoon. I watched about my ponies and it was like a feel good kind of movie. Um, but unless you're watching that sort of thing, then your brain can't get turned off because you have too many things going over and over again in your head. You know, many people will have a bedside journal, not even always to talk, to put their gratitudes, but many will have a bedside journal to clear their mind. And this is what I advise some people. It's like they say, well, my thoughts are going over again of all the things I need to do. And I say, well, what if you have a little journal, you know, a piece of paper <laughs> by your bed and you write down everything that's in your mind? Okay, the shopping list, whatever you need to do. If you wrote that and you cleared your mind, then you can tell your mind that it's time to go to sleep. And once again, in this age of digital technology, there's so many things that we can do. Again, vibrational frequencies, healing frequencies, uh, progressive muscle relaxation, uh, mindful breathing that can help you go to sleep at nighttime. So, but focusing on sleep, Rob, I think of one of the things that we can do that doesn't cost anything is really for our health is to get proper and adequate amounts of sleep. So extremely important. And as part of my sleep hygiene checklist, I say to people too, I say, number one, TVs should not even be allowed in the bedroom. So the, the bedroom is meant for sleep and for rec types of recreation for adults. Um, <laughs> right. But the bedroom really is only meant for two things. That's what the bedroom should be for. So TVs have no place in the bedroom. Um, people tell me that they will use a television uh, to put white noise on before they go to bed. Not a good idea. If you want white noise, turn a fan on. Turn, again, get an iPod or something and turn white noise app on. But if you leave your television on while you're sleeping and the white noise, even if it's a, a scratchy screen, you're getting the impact from that color of the TV. Because even though you're asleep, your eyes are still sensing the light from that television. So, and then the other thing that really impacts sleep, I see for many individuals, and I know people won't like this, but it's pets in the bed. Because if you have a pet in your bed, you know, it could be a five pound little lap dog, or it could be a hundred pound Labrador. I'm sorry, you can love your pets and your animals, but it comes back to, like you said, we love our animals more than ourselves. The most important thing you need to do for yourself is to get adequate sleep. And that means Bambi or, or your poodle, whatever, they need to sleep <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> what do people call dog? I don't know, you know, Zeus or 
whatever their dog's name may be. <laughs> Juice Apollo. <laughs> there we Apollo. go. <laughs> and then the last in terms of, you know, recovery would be as well as we, when we want to get things really dark at night, then a, the opposite of that is, is that it's true. So in the morning, one of the things that you should be thinking about is how in the first hour or two of my day that I can get out in direct sunlight. Because when our, again, our eyes are a machine, like God made this incredible body, right? And he gave us a sun for a reason. When our eyes are exposed to sunlight in the early morning hours, that sends a signal to our brain to release melatonin at a specified time during the day. So then, then we will start to fall asleep more at nighttime. Um, and we know that, of course, shift workers, I know it's a whole other story. When you're having things like air travel and things, it can be super difficult because your, your hours of light and darkness change, which is why now on airplanes, you know, they change the color of the light in the plane to try to get your body a little bit more adjusted to it. So yeah, I could go on and on about sleep, but I'm gonna have to stop because I'm like just, but it's such an important thing. Um, but the other thing I do wanna just touch on, I have this ring, it's called the aura ring, if people can see it. And if you truly have problems with sleep, an aura ring is an incredible tool. It's a sleep tracking tool. So I'll post a few little things about my aura ring online um, because again, sleep is number one, it is fundamental to, uh, to health. And from the hormone standpoint, my last thing, remember, like I said before, if you don't sleep, uh, your leptin and ghrelin, the two hormones that basically help to regulate your hunger, if you're not sleeping well, then those are going to be out of balance. You're going to get more cravings. You're not going to lose the weight. Okay, remember I said sleep apnea. If you have sleep apnea and it's untreated, you got to get it treated because otherwise you're going to have problems losing the weight. Wow. Okay. You're really but into that's... the sleep today. That was pretty good. <laughs> and this I is my sleep bandwagon for today. I got to leave work now. I need to go home and have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, and Rob, that's, you know, and napping's good. Everybody, a 20 to 30 minute nap is not a problem. Um, I'm personally not a napper. I don't, my body just doesn't nap. But for those that can, there's no problems with taking a little nap in the afternoon to help to recharge charge your batteries. I got no problems. At least twice a week at some point, I have a nap in the afternoon for a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those things. <laughs> so lots of great information today, Rob. And yeah, I know I'm kind of vibrating now because I'm talking about sleep. Um, but really this is so much, there's so much information I want to share. And I know that this is just getting everybody that little bit, like we said, it's the journey of the thousand miles. We're starting with five days. Um, and next week we're going to be having ways that we can create, have a, um, a way that you can continue to work, uh, with me along this next step of your journey as well. That's great doc. Cause this is a the fact that, uh, this just sort of opens our eyes to people that, we have to start changing the way we live. Right. Become who we were meant to be. Right. One and moment at a time. Thank you for everything. Great job. Oh, Two thumbs you, up, Bob. Siskel and Ebert, they said. <laughs> and tomorrow, remember, is day five. Uh, but remember, there are prizes coming up. So just Yeah, to the let prize you... is we're going to see a video, I believe. A video? of A little uh, movement video that uh, somebody was... Uh, Oh. suckered me into doing one and they said they were going to do one i'm still waiting to see this video okay so i filmed phase <laughs> one of the video yesterday so we're hoping that we will get the rest of the video done and phase i will one. Have a... okay yeah. <laughs> and, so and i'm hoping tomorrow's tomorrow. friday you know that right i know joyful <clears throat> movement there will be dr keenan you know it doesn't have to be anything special a little dance by the pool is fine anything's good yeah we will have it for you all right uh, but tune in for tomorrow day five prizes will be on saturday and just to let give you a heads up saturday now is going to be a live zoom call you don't have to be there to get your prize but it's going to be a live call because we're going to talk about next steps and also it's going to be live so i can see as many of you that have been following us through the week so i'll be posting more about that tomorrow awesome thanks rob thanks everybody for tuning in see thanks, you all guys. tomorrow <laughs> Bye, see guys. You.